Hello, this is Steve Gauck, agronomist with Bex Hybrids in Southern Indiana. And today I want to talk a little bit about Southern versus common rust. Last year in 2016, we had a bad outbreak of Southern rust that did cause some yield loss in a lot of areas. And this year we're seeing another influx of it come north into Southern Indiana. I want to talk about how to identify it uh, maybe some possibilities on spraying it and even some look-alikes and take versus common rust. So common rust is what I've been seeing mainly this year out in a lot of cornfields. And I've got a couple leaves here, as you can see, the common rust. It's more of a longer lesion. It's raised. It's normally dark brown. The one big telltale sign is as you flip over a leaf, you will notice there's raised pustules on the bottom also. A little harder to rub off uh, and usually end up with uh, a little bit of a brown tint to your fingers after you've rubbed on it. Common rust is, is have, we've had a larger outbreak than normal this year, but it's not known to be yield robbing. There is some hybrid differences, but it's not going to be one of those things I'm going to make a spray application just for it. Now we've been hot and humid this summer and Humidity and the moisture creates a good breeding ground for diseases. So your gray leaf spot and these rust are, are running rampant in a lot of places. So let's take a look after we've looked at the common rust. We're going to jump over here and look at a leaf with some severe infestation of southern rust. Now you'll notice southern rust is much smaller lesions. Uh, they're more orange. When you rub your finger across them, you turn orange. So that's kind of a telltale sign. As you flip it over, you can see the disease comes through the leaf, but there's nothing that's going to rub off. You can even see here where even southern rust has infected the stalk. So the, the question then becomes, when do you spray for southern rust if you've identified it? So southern rust can move quickly. It could kill a corn plant in 10 to 14 days if conditions are right. So that's 80 degree temperature plus, that's some high humidities, that storms have come out of the south. So I want to look a little bit at, okay, what growth stage are you in? So you can see this corn here is that brown silk. We're past brown silk for the most part in this field. And we're not quite to the milk stage here as we look at these fields, but we're getting closer uh, from that standpoint. So we're milk, uh, not quite to dough stage. So we got to make a decision here. We've got another probably four weeks, depending on the weather, before this corn uh, is mature to black layer. Most fungicides that we see out there, the quilted cells, Stratego yield, things like that are very good on the rust, but you're only going to get maybe two weeks residual out of those. New product out in the market called Triva Pro. We're probably looking at more around that four weeks. Some people even say maybe even five. So if I'm just getting done with the silking and tasseling, the Triva Pro may be more of an approach I would take to get longer season residual. The Quilt XLs, things like that, if I'm at milk stage and have a heavy infestation would be a product I would probably take a look at. If you did spray a, a product at VT, our PFR proven data shows that fungicide applications at VT are most profitable. Uh, it may not hold if we have a late heavy infestation of southern rust. So just because you sprayed doesn't mean maybe you're in the clear. So you'll need to continue scouting. The other thing is you're scouting, you need to keep an eye on. We've seen a lot of this. This is Physoderma brown spot. And we've seen it. It's, it's where a lot of cases, especially water, got over top of plants in the whirls early in the season, caused some in, infestation some heavy rain splashing soil up on the plants. But I've seen more of this than, than I have ever seen out in fields. And nothing there, no raised pustules, nothing rubs off. So make sure you identify it properly because the Physoderma brown spot also does not cause any yield loss and no need to spray for it. So proper identification is key. If you have questions or want a good identification, send a plant sample to your local university. Uh, for us, it's Purdue. The Plant Pest Diagnostic Lab does a great job of turning those back out and confirming whether or not there's southern rust. So again, right now today, it's cool this morning. It's about 72 degrees out here in the field. So rust isn't spreading. So we're going to get cool over the weekend. I want to kind of hold off a little bit, maybe before I make an application and see if we start to warm up and we see an influx of 
uh, of disease start coming again. Also, make sure you know your corn hybrids. Some hybrids have some better tolerance. 6127 has seemed to have shown some pretty good tolerance to southern rust. 5828, some pretty good tolerance. But our more racehorse hybrids, like 6158, are ones that are on my watch list for southern rust. So know your hybrids, know what growth stage they're at, know the yield potential of the field. If it's got a lot of good yield potential, we need to protect this upper canopy and keep it clean. So right now the southern rust mainly seems to be down in the canopy, uh, but we wanna make sure we're keeping this upper canopy clean, get through grain fill. So hopefully that helps distinguish a little bit between what we see here as southern rust versus our common rust. But if you have questions, talk to your local Beck seed advisor or give me a ring and be glad to help you out. Thanks and have a great day.